this is a three phase grid connection topology we have discussed this and this topology we have implemented here at our department and on the rooftop we have around 25 kilowatts of pv panel and they are connected to the grid using this same topology so i will discuss about the various components go, that go up to make up all these blocks that will give you an idea of uh, what goes into making a three phase grid connected inverter now let us see where this block this pv modules are located on the rooftop so this figure shows you the way the pv panels are mounted there is a set of panels here and then there are a set of panels here the one to the left where my cursor is moving this is around 10 kilowatts worth of panels and they are connected to a commercial grid connected inverter now there is a set of 25 kilowatt panels here that is designed and developed the inverters are designed and developed entirely by the students and then maintained by the students and it is powering uh, putting power into the grid for the past two years and that is what I would be showing how this picture was taken we use uh, we, uh, we used technology we used IOT internet of things technology observe the string here the string is actually connected to a balloon which is having the uh, camera mounted on that and uh, um, uh, that camera is actually uh, taking the shot and beam, uh, beaming the picture back to our server here this is another perspective of the same roof the one mounted here where i am showing the cursor movement these are the 25 kilowatt set there are 100 panels each of 250 watt uh, rating this is another angle of the same panel set in the floor just below where the panels are mounted a room there is a room called the power room in which it comes and links up to the grid this is where the uh, building grid is and this is the panel which actually interfaces the um, uh, lines the power lines coming from the grid connected inverter and the actual grid through the switch gear and uh, the metering for how much amount of power that is being put into the grid is being done here you also see that there is um, a switch here the, there are five inverters each of five kilowatts and uh, uh, the data from the dsp board from each of the inverter is routed through this switch into the ethernet and the server and then we keep capturing the data of how much energy that is being put every day this is the power panel which interfaces the power lines coming from the inverter pv inverter and the power lines coming from the grid this actually is the interface panel these are the racks the 19 inch rack system onto which we have placed the inverters you see this is one inverter there is another inverter here there is another inverter this rack also contains inverters there are two inverters in this rack we have taken a strategy here that we make it in the form of racks modular so that we will be able to have redundancy and if anything fails even for repair purposes we can take out only mm, that inverter which is uh, uh, not functional repair it and put it back and we have made it uh, using the 19 inch standards so this is where each inverter is 5 kilowatts there are 5 of them so totally 25 kilowatt is being put into the grid there is some thermal design also that has been done you see there is a duct which is coming in it is coming from outside like the ac duct which feeds the air fresh air into the uh, rack system there are blowers mounted on the bottom which blows air to the top there are 
fans on the top which will suck the air and then uh, push it out. You see the duct going out. So uh, thermal considerations are important because they can become hot, 25 kilowatts and even if there is 10% uh, um, loss uh, then you are talking of around 2 kilowatts plus amount of power loss that can be very hot. And you see here transformers, here we have not ha used separate inductors, we have used the leakage inductor inductance of the transformers itself and uh, um, uh, uh, use them as the interface component to interface the grid and the inverter. No special inductor has been made. The transformers are acting as isolators. Here is a view of the transformers. They are three phase transformers. There are five of them, one, two, three here and two on the other side. This picture shows the rack door open so you see this is the 19 inch segment and the height is 100 mm, the cards are 100 mm. Now there are various cards inter, uh, inserted into the sections, each is one inverter, the DC bus capacitor. You will see the fan blowers here which is taking the air from the bottom and then pushing it up, forcing it up through the uh, through the rack and on the top there are another set of fans which will suck the air and push it out. This is another close-up shot of the grid tied inverter. This is where the main DSP controller board is located. You see the ethernet cable uh, which is going to the switch and there is a small display here, the DC bus capacitor and the various cards here. Each section is a card. I will explain to you what those cards are. This is the back side of the rack. So on the back side of the rack you see the heat sinks, the IGBTs are mounted 1200 volt, 75 amps IGBTs are mounted on the heat sink and the uh, heat is dissipated through these fins plus also the forced, you, uh, forced air cooling that is flowing through the uh, rack by means of the blower, the duct and the blowers. And there is a DIN rail system and we have used the LMAX connector. And there is a whole lot of wiring that one, one has to do. A close up shot of the backside of each inverter. So th you see the DIN rail and the LMAX connectors. The ferrules, naming the parts, naming the wires, they are all very very important. So when you open the inverter, when you look at it from the top, you see the arrangement of the cards like this and each section is a, is a card and the card is made to 19 inch standard. They are 100 mm in height and the depth can vary. There is a backplane bus also which is connected to the IGBTs. The IGBTs are connected on the back and then the heat sink. So you see there are various cards. What are the cards that we have used? Let me show you pictures of these cards. Here you have the sensor cards. This is the DSP board, the main control board. These three are the gate drive in each card you have gate drive for top and bottom of each arm. So you have three cards for the six IGBTs. On the lab table setup for testing the various cards, the grid tied inverter has to be tested on the lab bench before putting it into the rack. This is the control board. So this is the TMS 320F. 280x series DSP processor that we have used. The power section here which powers up which may does the housekeeping uh, power, power for the entire board. It generates the 1.8 volts, 3.3 volts, 5 volts plus minus 12 volts for the analog section here. All that is done by this power section. This is the DSP portion. 
this is the gate drive card one gate drive card is having two gate drives one for the top mosfet one for the bottom mosfet they are isolated gate drives so this portion this half is for one switch this portion is for another switch this is one sensor card senses the voltage so it senses the output voltage recall that we need to sense the output voltage VA, VB, VC and we also need to sense the uh, currents that are being uh, fed into the injected into the grid IA, IB, IC so you need a sensor card for sensing the voltage you need a sensor card for sensing the grid current injection so this board is actually sensing VA, VB, VC this is a sensor card, voltage sensor card so this is another sensor card this is for sensing the current IA, IB, IC so these are hall sensors and we are sensing the three grid currents that are being injected you see that with respect to the this block diagram all this portion which I am sweeping with this mouse all this portion is within the control card DSP processor gate drive is one card sensing which I have just shown by three lines here is one card voltage sensing is one card we saw the inverter we saw the transformer now all this portion that is the DSP board the gate drive and the sensor boards and sensor cards they all need power for working so there is an input power which is being drawn from the grid side and stepping it down to 15 volts and then supplying to the various cards and from those points uh, a local power supply is generated for example the DSP board may need a 3.3 volt 1.8 volt 5 volts so from that uh, 15 volts which is given to each card uh, the local power supply is generated so the housekeeping power supply for the entire control circuit is generated by one single card I will show you that this is the power supply card so this gives you um, a single output which is uh, fed to the various uh, boards and the uh, various boards generate local power su uh, supply from uh, the power that is uh, coming from this board output so like that you see that there are various components so this is only a topology then next you have to draw the circuit schematic then after that things that will not get reflected in the circuit schematic like the thermal issues that is a separate angle that you have to look at then the wiring wiring diagram that is another angle that you have to look at the enclosures and enclosure design all this needs to be integrated so it is a lot of work uh, from the electronic design engineers the electrical wiring people the enclosure mechanical people the thermal people all these people should collaborate and coordinate to make this nice wonderful system So all these were done by different groups of students they collaborated as a team and together made this particular project and then for the past two years it has been delivering something like uh, uh, 60 to 100 units every day to the local campus grid.